Welcome to the latest of our reflections. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. The main theme of the readings today is Jesus the Good Shepherd. But one of the readings, one of the set readings for today, is one of my favourite parts of the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. And that's the passage from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to the end of the chapter. And I'm going to read that passage first of all. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Well, as you will know, the Acts of the Apostles is the second volume of a two-volume work by St. Luke. The first volume, of course, being his Gospel, his account of the life and ministry of Jesus. And the second volume, the Acts of the Apostles, covers the earliest history of the Christian Church, from the ascension of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples, to the spread of the Gospel especially through the travels and the preaching of St. Paul. And this short passage that I've just read at the end of the second chapter gives us an interesting little window into the life of those earliest Christians. In these six verses, we see the outline of their priorities and their life together, building on a solid foundation and resulting, we are told in verse 47, in the Lord adding to their number day by day. And so we note, first of all, that they devoted themselves to the teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. The teaching was that passed on by the apostles of Jesus and they would have learned about the life and teaching of Jesus actually from those who had been with him. As the earliest Christians were Jews, they would also have had their scriptures, what we know as the Old Testament, and in turn as the church developed, these new converts would eventually themselves become teachers of the faith, and so the faith would be passed on. And of course in our day we learn from a very different perspective, as we have the teaching of Jesus and the teaching of the Apostles actually recorded for us in the New Testament. And learning about the Christian faith, and especially learning about the Bible, is as much an important part of church life for us as it was for those first Christians. In devoting themselves to fellowship, we read that they actually shared their possessions and they showed practical generosity and care to those who were in need. Fellowship expressing the common bond that we share with our brothers and sisters is a vital part of Christian life. We are much stronger together and it's important that we meet together, whether that's when we're able to meet in our services and in our various smaller groups, not able to do that at the moment of course, but we look forward to that time, or at the moment of course we seek to keep in touch with one another by technology, whether that's being online or of course by phone. We're not made to be independent of each other and we're called to be a community where the love of Jesus is shown in real and practical ways. And love, says Jesus, is the badge by which the world will identify us as belonging to him. And then the breaking of bread has always been a central part of Christian worship, keeping the command of Jesus to do this in remembrance of me. 
Well, of course, at the moment we are in exile from this important aspect of our life together. But perhaps we shall appreciate and cherish the Holy Communion, the Eucharist, even more when we have the privilege once again of meeting together as guests around the Lord's table. And then the Christians devoted themselves to prayer. And prayer, in the words of an old hymn, is the Christian's vital breath. Prayer is powerful, whether the expression of an individual Christian or the united prayer of Christians gathered together. And the Church, the people of God, is based on prayer, and without that priority we can do nothing. The earliest believers recognised this, and so they met for prayer, whether in their homes or as Jews, as they met in the Temple. And the growth of the Christian Church and the whole spread of the Christian message was based on a foundation of prayer. And of course all these things are still the foundations of our life today. As I read this passage it strikes me afresh that although our buildings may be closed the church continues to be active in praying, in sharing, in fellowship together and in continuing to reach out in love with the good news of Jesus Christ. We do look forward, of course, to when we can be with each other again. But until then, we pray that the Lord will continue to help and guide us to be his church and to express his life to one another and to our communities. I'm going to pray the collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you once again for watching and may God bless you in these days when we continue to celebrate the resurrection, the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.